piece number 98, the tete a tete, which means head to head meeting. And it's from a series uh, of six paintings titled Marriage a la Mode, which means a marriage, a fashion, fashionable marriage. And we are responsible for scene two in this series of six. Um, the context for this piece uh, is right. We're in the Baroque era still, 1743. It's in England, and it's important to know the social structure at the time. That we had the very poor people, peasants working on farms and estates, and then we had the aristocrats. An aristocrat is somebody who's got a name. They have a family name, land, especially also that's been handed down from generation to generation. They do not necessarily have money though, and it takes a lot to run land and they're reluctant to get rid of the land because then they lose kind of their name. So what parents lots of times did of these families is they married their child off to a wealthy person's child. And in this case, like the Arnold Feeney portrait shows us that there were wealthy people, wealthy merchants uh, who may not have had a name. They may not have had status, but they had money. So it was a marriage of convenience, a marriage of fashion. So the function of this is William Hogarth is, ha, has a commentary on that, a commentary on loveless arranged marriages, marriage of wealth and convenience. And so that's the first function. The second function is Hogarth used this painting set as the first round of this story. And then he ended up making a, an etching out of this these same scenes and then sold the prints off the etchings. So kind of making money in a couple ways here. Uh, we are responsible for the second scene, but it's important to kind of know the story so you understand the context for the second scene. So content here um, and context is that in this scene, we see two men sitting at a table. One is a man with gout. He's got his foot up. He's He's been living the wealthy life, which is a gout is a sign of so rich foods and stuff. Um, and he has a family tree. He's got a name. Uh, but what he doesn't have is cash money. And this man over here who's looking at this marriage contract, he's got cash money. And his cash money has been emptied out here on the table in front of the aristocrat with a name. So these two men are hoping to make an, a good arranged marriage of their children. Here are their kids. This is the aristocrat's son. And he he's got his back to his future wife who is sitting here polishing her ring, but talking to another man quite intimately. This is silver tongue in the foreground. We have two hunting dogs that are chained together. Kind of a symbol of the marriage probably. Okay. This is our scene. And so the couple has been married and uh, we can see on the clock up here that it's 12, o'clock is I think 1220 is what experts say and we don't know if that's 12 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock in the uh, you know noon excuse me in the midday or middle of the night neither either way it's bad uh you can see let's start with the woman right uh the bride here right they've been married she's got a wet spot on her gown which probably means that she has been having intercourse. She has this book is in front of her about whist, a card game. And over here are cards thrown on the ground. Um, music is on the ground, disheveled here. Music is typically a sign of intimacy, romance, lovemaking. And she's she's got her legs spread. Her arms are up. She's like in the woohoo moments here. And she's got a mirror over her head like she's signaling to somebody probably a lover um here is her husband he has also got disheveled clothing the dog you know uh, their their pet dog for sign of fidelity is sniffing a bonnet in, that's in his coat pocket Pro so not his wife's bonnet probably here is a sword that is broken was he involved in a duel does this show his infidelity his impotence here um, so not a good scene up close here. M real important. Look at that neck. Do you see that black spot? That's a sign of syphilis. That means that um, 
he has been having affairs, right? Syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease. It likely came from the Americas, the disease originally. And so in this Colombian exchange, you know, right, in this act, um, accumulation of wealth in Europe came these consequences of STDs. So this spreads pretty easily sexually, and it's not curable at, at this point, at their point in history. It is today. Behind the couple, let's look, they have on the mantle lots of little trinkets. This indicates that, right, they're buying, they're buying crap, essentially. And um, above the mantle is the painting of Cupid here, right, sign of love. Uh, but here is a bust, and right? Remember our Roman bust, so this is a kind of a classical sign. But the nose is broken, so there's something amiss here. Things are not going well. The man over here who's got his hand up, he's got bills in his hand, right? This is a little stake with bills in his hand. And um, he's thrown his hands up because it's like this is a household that's out of control. I, it's financially a disaster. And um, so he's kind of walking away. On the other, in the other room, away from the kind of the fireplace room, kind of like in a dining room area, we see uh, pieces of classic, you know, aristocratic lifestyle. We got an archway here with coffers, right, and rosettes in the center. We've got ionic columns here, so some serious wealth. Um, Baroque, right? Look at that um, kind of fanciful stuff, right? This is Baroque esque for sure. On the wall are paintings of saints, uh, but also on the wall is this painting with a um, a curtain over it and only pulled back a little bit, revealing a foot, right? This would be like a foot fetish being shown here. This is a possible sign of, you know, illicit lovemaking going on. Um, so things are going south if we look at the little tiny clues. The servant here, if it's midday <clears throat> or midnight, here he's disheveled. Uh, <clears throat> and if we look again, I want to show you this, right? There is a uh, candle that's been snuffed, maybe, but it's like, I don't know, is that chair going to catch on fire? So things are not good. Um, <clears throat> scene two, just for some context for you, the husband who's got syphilis is probably out with this uh, prostitute or young girl that he's seduced. They're trying to get a cure for syphilis. There's way more to be told in this painting here, but he's not getting a cure. She's got syphilis also. She's probably got early sign of syphilis with mouse sores. Well, the wife, <clears throat> Mrs. Squanderfield, right? She's got, all, she brought all the money to the marriage. She is here having a relationship still with Mr. Silvertongue, right? The guy who was in the first painting. In his hands, he's got some tickets to a, a theater or something, a ball that they're going to go to. Coral beads. These are beads that a baby would... Uh, chew on if they're teething. So she's had a baby with her husband, likely. A uh, black manservant serving cocoa, uh, right? This indicates this exchange, this wealth coming into Europe, right? African slavery and cocoa or cacao came from the Americas. And another page boy here, black, playing with a Greek symbol of infidelity. A fifth scene, it's a it's a scene in a um, like a brothel almost a uh, hotel low lowbrow no matter uh, what this is on the ground you see masks so they've been to a masquerade and this is Mrs. Uh, Squanderfield right and um, she has been having um, illicit sex with the silver tongue right her her lover and before her lover started jumping out the window here. He killed with this sword, Mr. Squanderfield, right? Her husband, right? He's got that syphilis mark here on the side of his neck. Last scene, context for you, right? Uh, Mrs. Squanderfield here has read the news that her lover, Mr. Silvertongue, was killed. He was hanged. Her husband's already been killed by him. On the ground also is this um, bottle of laudanum. So she has overdosed. 
And as she's dying, her father, you know, all about the money, he brought the money to her marriage. Um, he's taking the wedding ring off of her hand, her cold dead hand. And then here is a nurse holding the child that she had with her husband, right? But here, a little mark of syphilis on the child and the child's got this brace on its leg, which is another sign of syphilis where the legs are uh, bent because um, the bones have been impacted by syphilis. So a uh, Baroque piece from England, commentary on marriages, uh, commentary on social structure, a uh, great piece.